Hi guys, it's Friday. So this is day five of your mental health hacks. And today's little vlog is going to be on neuroplasticity. So I hope you found these videos helpful. Let me know if you have so far. Um, they're just like a little snippet of the work that I do and I thought I'd um, do them so that to kind of pique your interest if you find these sort of things helpful. Um, so neuroplasticity is uh, the basis for a lot of the work that I do with my clients and in both of my programs. So my FLY, First Love Yourself program, which is something you can do, a self-study program, and my Freedom program, which is my eight-week program about um, finding freedom from habits and anxiety but I base a lot of my work on neuroplasticity and if you haven't heard of neuroplasticity it's basically neuro um, meaning the nervous system so the brain and the spinal cord and the enteric nervous system which is your gut and plasticity uh, comes from the Greek word plastos which basically means moldable so neuroplasticity is essentially referring to your moldable brain. Now what this means for us is that our brain um, adapts and reorganizes and repairs synapses in the brain. So if we have any kind of mental health, physical health problems, essentially if we put our focus on getting better if we know what to do like from a mental health point of view because that's what this has been about mental health this week um it essentially means there's there's hope there's hope for all of us yay and i think a lot of us feel like um things aren't hopeful sometimes and we can feel uh, a lot of despair but i want you to know that there is hope and also that your brain is malleable and can change and our lives are not scripted as much as that feels like it is so what you might find and what you might kind of how this might make sense to you is that a lot of us have habits of behavior and habits of thoughts that we don't like right now essentially what's happening is you're either following uh, your brain's unhelpful thoughts and when the more we repeat those behaviors the more we pay attention to those thoughts the more they'll come around so effectively what I would encourage you to do is just notice if your brain is doing that and of course as I've said in the beginning the work my groups my programs my circle group this is the work that we do this is the education that i teach about kind of brain chemistry and rewiring um your brain uh so that you can understand yourself better and take your thinking less seriously uh, certainly the thoughts that don't do us any that take us down a loophole of negativity Okay, but that's happening because your brain is um, wanting you to survive, so it likes repetition. It's a prediction machine, your brain. So the more you repeat something, the more it will come around, which means if we want to create a good habit of thought or behavior, then the more we repeat it, the more it will come around and the easier it will become. So take it, for example, exercise now I've said in the past videos move and if you can't move from because of your disability or fibromyalgia in the last videos I took about something that you can do but a lot of us think um, I'm not motivated to exercise that's something that I hear a lot you know like yoga I'm not motivated blah 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 it's because your brain when you've done the exercise or the yoga or whatever it is you've done your brain when you think I'm going to do that, what your brain will do, which is quite clever, but it's wanting you to survive, so there's a reason for it. What your brain will do is remember how much energy it took for you to do that, and it will tell you in your brain how it's going to be, and it will try everything it can to stop you from doing the exercise, which is mental, right? Um, because it, but it's the reason it's doing that is because it wants you to survive. So it wants to conserve energy. That's the only reason it does it. So what we need to learn to do is ignore that and just do the exercise or the creative um, 
or the creative thing that we like doing, the things that we like doing to get rid of stress, right? So for some people that might be knitting, it might be crochet, it might be singing, it might be horse riding, it might be playing the piano. Like just pick one thing that you like to do Think about that and try and make that a habit every day. But the first few days, your brain's going to try and tell you every which way to not do it. That's essentially what's going to happen. But once you get past that and it comes from the action or the behavior or the thought comes from the prefrontal cortex to the basal ganglia, then it becomes autopilot and it becomes easier to do. And that's essentially what happens. The more we do those things, that creativity or the movement or the yoga or whatever it is we like to do, the more we're going to produce serotonin, the more we're going to produce dopamine, the more we're going to produce oxytocin. And these things are good for us. These things are what kind of settle us down and create calmer feelings. And we take our stinking thinking less seriously. So... I hope that was helpful and if you want me to do any more of these little videos let me know but as I said the um the, the programs that I run the fly program and the freedom program and lots of stuff goes on in my circle group if you want to know any more about it all just shout give me give me a message or let me know what you found most helpful out of these videos and if you want me to do any more i will it's been an enjoyable uh, thing to do this week so thank you for listening if you did bye